When my professors in Bible college told us about the amazing oldest and best Codex Sinaiticus, I couldn't wait to see it for myself. They told us that the text critics had already gotten amazing information off of it and copied it down for us. But I still wanted to see what it looked like. If they're telling you not to trust your King James anymore because of what was in a book someone found, you kind of want to look at the book, don't you? Here is a description of the Sinaiticus from the 2009 book by Janet Soskus, The Sisters of Sinai. It sounds virtually identical to what my professors said. Quote, It contained all the books of the Bible as known to the modern world, and its weight was such that one man alone could not carry it. It was clearly the product of a professional scriptorium of the highest order. Then it says, No manuscript of the Bible was more complete or more ancient. The Codex Sinaiticus, as it came to be called, antedating most known copies by almost 600 years. Now, those of you who have watched these vlogs already know it's missing a good fourth of the Bible. And it has erasures, rewrites, overwriting, corrections, and marginal notes. And it's not quite as ancient as people have been led to believe. But bear with me for a minute. Drop back with me into the 1980s in Bible college. Where was this magical book? How could I see it? How could I get one? I looked it up in any dictionary or textbook I could find. Take a look at what we saw of the Sinaiticus. Ready? Hi, I'm David Daniels from Chick Publications. Here is Introduction to the History of Christianity. I blew the images up to make them easier to see. Here's one. You see that? This one says, This page from Codex Sinaiticus contains the last chapter of John's Gospel. Well, you know that's John 21. This page right here. I blew it up. And it says, Part of the last chapter of John's Gospel in Greek from the 4th century Codex Sinaiticus. Notice anything about them? They're both pictures of the same page. So far, we've seen John 21. Just one page. Now look at a general introduction to the Bible, the book by Jesuit-educated Norman Geisler. The same illustration is in the 1968 and the 1986 editions, so I'll just use the first printing. See it right here? Here. It says, Codex Sinaiticus, open to John 21, 1 to 25, British Museum. Anyone detecting a pattern? How about this one? Archaeology in Bible Lands. What did it say in 1977? Here it is right here. I blew it up for you. It says... Codex Sinaiticus, open to John 21, 1 to 25, British Museum. What's going on here? Let me tell you a little story. Diamonds were once rare and expensive, but in 1869, a diamond rush started. People could find them all over. According to the laws of supply and demand, Diamonds should have been dirt cheap at that point. But Cecil Rhodes, financed by the Rothschilds, got a bunch of diamond merchants together and made the De Beers Group. They stuffed their heaps of diamonds in a bunch of warehouses and only let out a few at a time. That low supply and high demand 
made the price of diamonds stay high. People wanted it all the more because they thought they were rare. But they couldn't have been more wrong. The Sinaiticus pushes were just like this, only they didn't hold back diamonds, they held back pages of the Sinaiticus. So just like me, they heard stories and legends about the magical Codex Sinaiticus, but they never got to see it all for themselves. It stayed mysterious and ran the show from behind the scenes. Meanwhile, our teachers kept showing us its more accurate words, which slowly destroyed our faith. And more importantly for the devil, they pried our hands off of the King James Bible and sold us a cheap faith-destroying knockoff. So, they made it hard to see the Sinaiticus. We were forced to just trust our teachers and all the scholars who said it was so great. Bye-bye, faith. Hello, doubt. It wasn't until 2004 that I finally got my first glimpse of Sinaiticus. And when I did, it looked like this. This is 1862 by Tischendorf. This is Isaiah 1, verses 1 to 27. Do you see how neat and orderly that is? Only that's not the actual codex. This is a facsimile which in 1860 meant Tischendorf made up letters for printing that looked like the letters from the Sinaiticus. And he had them made in a bunch of different sizes and quickly printed up editions of the Sinaiticus, only they were all cleaned up. We had no idea that we had a typeset copy to look at and not photographs of the real thing. So this is the facsimile. And this is the real thing. See the difference? Here's a close-up. Honestly, can you call these guys scribes of the highest order? Holding back pages like this tricked us into trusting our teachers. For all we knew, they'd seen it for themselves. But maybe they hadn't. Maybe they were tricked into trusting their teachers as well. I made a huge mistake back then. I handed over my trust to my teachers. It should have stayed in my Bible. I think I was one of the few that had started out with the King James Bible, but from the very first day, the King James Bible was zeroed out and set aside in favor of whatever they liked that was based on the Sinaiticus and the Vaticanus, of course. We students, by trusting our teachers, also trusted that the Sinaiticus was right when it removed words from the Bible. So we no longer had faith in verses about the story of the woman caught in adultery, John 7, 53 to 8, 11, uh, the resurrection appearances of Jesus in Mark 16, 9 to 20, the three-person Godhead in 1 John 5, verses 7 and 8, the need to believe before being baptized in Acts 8, 37, that Jesus is the only begotten Son in John 1.18. Instead, we were taught that he's an only begotten God. That's what the Jehovah's Witnesses teach. Little by little, our trust in basic Bible verses faded. That's why I bought all those Greek helps and critical notes. I can no longer be sure of what God said. And that wasn't because the King James Doctrine was ever proved wrong. Not at all. It was because I trusted my teachers who said that the King James was wrong. I never actually saw the evidence for myself. But now you can, 147 years later, after generations of people trusting the lying Sinaiticus, the evidence was finally made available to the public since 2009, 
www.codexsinaiticus.org has been online. We have no idea how long it'll be available. Please take advantage of it. Check every picture I show you. Do what I could not do for over 30 years. See whether your professors and preachers are telling you the truth or not. That is my purpose in putting out these videos for you to see. With all my heart, I want you to have faith, not doubt. If I had to do it all over again, I would never simply trust my teachers. I would check up on every claim they made. It is too easy to trust a teacher, but it's hard to stand on the words of God, especially, some of you know about this, when you have to do it alone, in a school, a Bible college, or a church. But as the Lord Jesus said in Luke 4, verse 4, it is written that man shall live, not live. It is written that man shall not live by bread alone but by every word of God. Guess what? The Sinaiticus also took out, but by every word of God. These guys have no shame. But I don't have to worry about any of that. The night I repented on August 24th, 1980, the Lord changed my life with this verse. Psalm 118, verse 8. It is better to trust in the Lord than to put confidence in man. I trust every word of God, perfectly preserved and translated exactly in English in my King James Bible. Over 400 years, it has been tried, tested, and proved. Accept no substitutes. God bless you, and have a wonderful day.